Croiso friends, welcome back to Opus L and I, where sometimes we make things for no real reason. I mean, not no reason really, but without a project in mind at least. One of my goals this year has been and continues to be to level up my understanding of narrow wear weaving. That means things like inkle weaving, card weaving, and tape or ribbon weaving. Basically anything that's woven in very narrow strips. I don't have the space for a full-size loom, no matter how much my friends keep trying to convince me that an upright, warp-weighted loom, the kind of thing that Vikings wove their cloth on, doesn't take up that much room, really. I follow a lot of really amazing creators on Instagram to look at beautiful things and to keep myself inspired, and one of my favorites is Cat's Cradle Textiles, a textile artist who spins their own yarn and makes the most magical cloth. I came across these amazing inkle woven bands on their feed where the lines seem to curve and split like zebra stripes or tree branches. When I reached out, they told me that the pattern was from the book The Weaver's Inkle Pattern Directory by Anne Dixon and was called the Runic Band. I loved the ombre and black idea and I knew I wanted to try making some SCA award regalia with the pattern. We have a recognition in my kingdom called the Iris of Merit, which is signified by wearing a garter made of rainbow ribbon. And I thought this would be an amazing variant to make, but I needed to figure out how to weave it first. You may remember from my Instagram, I had woven this short test piece in order to better hold onto my masks at events over my head coverings. It worked out well once I had figured out how the structure worked. After that, I figured a larger scale proof of concept was needed with some of the refinements I felt needed after the first test piece. So I grabbed some of my trusty Eowyn Weaver silk picked up at Gulf Wars this year to use on a full length warp on my ankle loom. Everyone go grab your cuppa. Today, I am drinking Not the Brave from Tabletop Teas. This one is a premium green tea blend with added buckwheat. It's nice and light and springy with um, a kind of nuttiness from the buckwheat. It isn't one you'll find on the regular website. It's one of the Adventure Club exclusive teas that you can only get by joining the Tea of the Month Club. And if you do decide to place an order, tell Tanya I sent you. We have a friendly wager on how many customers I've sent her way. Let's get into it. First things first, I'm using my Lazy Kate, a tool that spinners use while plying yarn, to hold my thread bobbins while I warp my loom. Because this is a proof of concept, I'm only using two colors, a deep navy and a lovely pale orchid pink. I'm going to start warping from the very front peg because that will be the easiest place to switch colors later. The first eight threads will be the border threads and they will all be navy since I want a solid border. I'm switching between open threads, which loop over the top back peg, and heddled threads, which loop over the top front peg. When the border threads are done, I'll add in the pink threads. I used a slip knot on the very front peg to start that thread, but next time I'm going to use a clove hitch instead. I tie the beginning and end of those threads together when I'm finished warping, and a clove hitch is easier to untie. This is going to be of paramount importance when I do the rainbow version that needs eight different colored threads. For the middle of the design, I'm using purple heddles to differentiate the design threads from the border ones. All of the heddled threads are navy and all of the open threads are pink, so if I weave it as usual, the center portion would just be striped.
As you can see, I'm just dropping the thread I'm not using when I switch colors. I probably could have put it under something heavy to maintain tension, but I didn't find that the warp loosened enough to make that much of a difference between switching. Once the loom is all warped up, I load the shuttle up with a navy thread. I'm using navy thread so that it doesn't contrast at the very edges where the weft threads show. I have to tell you, I am so excited to finally start a new weaving project so I can use this beautiful swan shuttle that Ryan from Stockman Originals carved for me. I still can't get over how lovely it is and how smooth it feels in my hand. I'm starting the band with a few passes of regular ankle weaving to make sure that the tension is even and correct. Now we start weaving in the runic pattern. Here is where using different heddle colors for the border sections gets real important because the border sections are woven every pick. They are never part of the pickup pattern. When creating the runic pattern, I start by lifting the open threads and picking up all of the border threads and a portion of the open threads to create a short bar. I'm not picking up any set amount. The length of the bar will change depending on how many or how few of the open threads I pick up at this stage. Next, I will take my other needle and pick up the heddled threads in the gap by pushing the open threads down enough to access the navy ones. Once that is done, I can transfer the threads to one needle by holding the border threads with my finger, sliding the heddle threads into the gap on the first needle, and then adding the border threads back. When everything is on the needle, I can weave that pick as usual. Then I'll weave the next pick with the open threads down below the huddled one so the navy threads are showing. You'll see that the pink bar doesn't go all the way to the end. The next pick is with the open threads up, creating a pink stripe that is the full width. And that creates that sideways Y shape in navy around the shorter pink bar. You can see that as I continue to weave, I am rocking the shuttle back and forth to really bring out the curves created by the uneven weave lengths. The way to make sure that the weave stays balanced is to then pick up a pink bar on the other side of the band. So we will do the same thing in reverse on the next pink stripe. 
Use one needle to pick up the border threads, leave a gap, pick up a section of the pink threads, and then the second border. Then pick up the navy threads in the gap and transfer them um, awkwardly to one needle and weave that pick. You can vary the length of the pickup sections and even do more than one of the short bars in a row, providing that you then balance out the weave on the other side. Then a stripe of navy, then pink, again creating the Y shape facing the other way this time. I wove like this with two needles for a while before I started wanting to go faster and I figured out a way to work with only one needle at a time. On the pickup rows, I start by picking up the border and a section of pink threads as I did before. But then instead of skipping a section, I push the remaining threads down and pick up the navy heddled threads directly onto the first needle and then lift the border threads and pick those up. Again, this is where having different colored heddles for the border comes in very handy. The end result is the same as working with two needles, we just eliminated some of the steps in the middle. For the opposite side, it works just the same. Pick up the border threads with the open threads up, move them down and pick up a section of the heddled navy threads, move the open threads up and pick up the remaining section of pink and the border threads. Now I will just continue this pattern, varying the lengths of the pickup rows and the sides and numbers in order to make an organic irregular pattern and making sure to really rock the shuttle as I beat the picks in order to get the maximum curve. I should also note that this is a completely modern pattern, unlike the other narrow wear ribbons I've done in other videos. Nothing historically accurate about this weave, but we won't let that stop us, will we?
Thank you to all of my current and continuing coffee members. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break.
Thanks for joining me, croissants. I still am not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with this trim, but I'm thinking about waiting until I hit 7,500 followers and doing a giveaway care package with it and maybe some tea and a couple small other things. The caveat here is that I can't do a giveaway on YouTube since it's against the terms of service. I'll have to do it on Instagram or something. Anyway, let me know in the comments if that's something you would like or if you have other suggestions about what I should do with this trim. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and feel free to click the bell if you like taking your chances with notifications, but I can't guarantee that YouTube will send them. If you're interested in finding me on social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere and the links will all be in the description box. I'll also post the link to my Ko-fi where you can leave me a one-time tip, browse my web shop, or join the membership tiers for additional content and a personal thank you of your very own in my next video. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Huil. Well.